Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will continue from where I left off in the previous one. Now if you remember we issued app-get update and app-get upgrade commands. That took a while to finish and process. I was prompted once. I was given a readme file in regards to wget program, wget packet. And the way you go about, the way you handle it is you press Q to exit. You do not close the terminal and terminate the updates. Rather, instead, you just press Q to exit the readme file and the update process will continue no problems. So today, we need to configure the, repos the sources uh, list. Those are the list of repositories from which your Linux distro actually pulls various packets and information from. Just like Fedora, Kali Linux also has uh, repositories, and if you go onto their website, you see the link is here. I have marked it. You have these four repositories that are the default repositories of Kali Linux, and you can just go ahead and copy paste them. Not a bad idea to do this. And I, sometimes I don't know why, but I don't find them by default in the repository list in the sources list, so I got to do it manually you go ahead and basically type in cd slash etsy slash apt oops apt ls and there you go you have sources dot list and go ahead and type nano sources dot list press enter and there you are now in the repository file in the repository file this is where they are listed this is where you can type them in so let's just go ahead and copy these two. I'm not going to worry about any duplicates now or anything of a kind. Uh, duplicate repositories are not going to break anything, so no worries. The system is smart enough to realize that for itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy the four of these. Later on, if we want, we can sort this out and remove the duplicates or something of a kind. But for the time being, it doesn't matter. It's not going to break anything. Just copy all four of them. Press Control o Enter, Control x to exit. And there you go. So once again, Control O to save a file. So press Control O, enter, and then Control X to exit. Excellent. Now that we got that sorted out, we need to clear the screen. And even though we've actually put placed our repositories there, it doesn't matter. The system will still not be able to pick anything up from them until we actually perform the following. So we need to do apt dash get the space update. So we're not upgrading the system; we're just updating the repository lists. This is gonna, this is this should this should go through relatively fast. And at the end, it is most likely going to report duplicates, but that is fine. That is okay. There is no problem there. If you are wondering why are we doing this, well, we do need these repositories in order to install the necessary headers for Kali Linux kernel, which we will need in order to install VirtualBox guest editions to get full screen functionality because if we continue to work like this in this mini in this smaller screen uh, it, it wouldn't be good trust me primarily because we're gonna be doing a lot of things we're gonna need a lot of windows that are open and that can present problems so there you go it's not a, it's not an error it's a W so it's a warning it says duplicate sources list duplicate sources list duplicate sources list no big deal there we can correct these problems later on if we wish, but for the time being, there is no need. Let me just go ahead and clear the screen. And now what I want to do is install two more packages, which will allow me to actually install and run VirtualBox guest editions. So I have a pre-built command here for you that I'm going to run. It goes like this, basically. You have apt-get you're calling the packet manager, you're telling it to do an update, but since we already did a few updates, I don't actually need that portion of the command. I'm just going to go ahead and use app-get install-y, and then I have dkms, that's one package, and then I have another package, because you can specify a lot of packages here, as many as you like, pretty much. And then I have Linux headers, dash, and what this here is, this is a variable this dollar sign. This is some sort of variable, a string, uh, and whatever this command, you name space dash r outputs, it will be stored into this variable and it will be added to this 
text line here. So let me just show you. I have uname dash r that I ran here on my terminal, and what I got was the kernel version and the system architecture 62, 64, or 32 bit. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. There is nothing to do as I have previously installed them. I didn't want to waste time during the tutorial, but this command is going to fly without any problems, especially because you have dash y argument. You're basically saying uh, to your packet manager, if you have any questions for me, just answer them all with yes. So that went just fine. Uh, the install process, I'm just going to go ahead and run app-get uh, upgrade. Uh, you want to make sure that this happens after the installation. I already did it, but just uh, doing a bit of a show here. And it says that two of them are not upgraded. It says Metasploit and Metasploit framework, but it says that the packages have been kept back. So this is being done for a valid reason. We will get into that a bit later on, but for the time being, let me just go ahead and clear the screen. One of the first things that we need to do now is go ahead and click on Devices, Insert, Guest Edition, CD Image. And yep, there we go. It popped. This is a warning that Kali Linux issues and that many other Linux type operating systems issue. Every, if you have content that is on a CD or a USB or something like that, and if it's configured to run automatically, the system will block it and then it will ask you for a permission. So the medium contains software intended to be automatically started. Would you like to run it? I'm going to go ahead and click run and most likely get an error. There we go. Error out to running software. Cannot find the auto run program. Now the error message, uh, yeah, it's it doesn't really tell us much in this case. I guess we could take a look at the log files and so on and so forth. But here is the solution which you can apply, as this is a common problem that people encounter all the time. So there are some standardized solutions and patches to this sort of problems. So just go ahead and type in the terminal cd to change the, to change the working directory. Navigate over to where the VirtualBox guest edition cd is, which is you can use the same path that I'm using. So media and then ls and then cd again, uh, cd, cd rom zero. Excellent. So we are now here and look, I have a listing of pretty much all the contents of the CD, basically. This is a virtual CD. It's not a real one, uh, but it works pretty much just the same. So this is the file that I want. I want to move it from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use command CP. You can also use move command, but you're permanently going to remove it from here. And that is not what we want to do. So just type in CP for copy. Uh, type the name of whatever you wish to copy. Very simple. And then specify the path to where you want the file to be copied. I want it to be copied in my home directory. Press enter and there we go. Now navigate over to your home directory. Get a listing. Excellent. It is there. The way to run any script in Linux, any executable file in general, not just the script, is just to press uh, dots slash and then the name of that file press enter there we go it is running the guest editions are being installed i have i have uh, attempted this process before just to make sure that everything would run smoothly and that's why it says removing existing things anyway it might take a while for it to finish but I assure you it will. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things to do and that's why that, that is why it's taking a bit of a bit more of your time. Now aside from the full screen functionality that we're gonna get by installing VirtualBox guest editions, just in case you think it's a bit of a pointless effort if you are a student because I as a teacher I have to have the full screen so you can see everything. Uh, you also have under devices drag and drop and shared clipboard. What these op well drag and drop you the name itself is self it's self explanatory. You just pull a file from somewhere and then pull it onto your virtual machine or vice versa. But I don't like to enable drag and drop. What I do, but what I do like to do is enable shared clipboard host to guest. Now here's why. I use my browser on my host machine primarily because I 
you tend to watch a video or two somewhere about something and you don't really want to bother go about installing Flash on Kali Linux, it can be problematic. So host to guest copying, copy pasting is very useful and you will need it, I assure you. Now there is a way, there is a shared folder settings. You can either construct a shared folder or you can have a localized web server on both machines where you can pull the information from and put the information there if configured properly, but shared folder set shared folders are better for such purposes. Anyway, you can review what has happened here. It has been listed here. The most important part of it all is that you don't have any reports of anything failing. So let's just go ahead and go over it. So all good here. Guest edition, no failures here, none here. Copying additional star modules, installing them. Done, done, done. Excellent. Installing the Windows system drivers, very important. Done then or just restart the system the window system okay so let's me just go ahead and attempt to re restart the graphics so in it run level 3 nope in it run level 5 will this work nope apparently it works on fedora but perhaps the command is a bit different here i'm just going to go ahead and type in uh reboot at Reboot is a lot safer option. In it 3 and 5, there are run modes of Linux. One is basically without any graphical interface, pure text, and the other one is with a GUI. The safer option when you conduct uh, installation of such packages that relate to the kernel directly, and especially if you have several of them, is simply to reboot the machine just to be on the safe side. It doesn't take up a lot of your time. It is very. It happens very fast, and it's a a lot safer option. It's going to save you a lot of headaches in the future. Excellent. So we have our boot here. Just press enter, and let's just close. Go ahead and close this. Let me just load the full screen. And let us see if it will actually happen, if the VirtualBox guest editions that we have installed will work. If they do work, great. If they don't, we're going to have to try something else. As these things do have a tendency to break and problems can occur. So it's booting. Come on. Okay, I need to log in first. Root. And test below. Excellent, there we go. I have a full screen. Let me just. Oops, the image is being adjusted. Excellent. There you have it. So we have Kali Linux now running in full screen mode, which is fantastic. Now we have a full overview of the situation. If I open up my terminal and. Oops, the scroll doesn't seem to work. It needs to be configured manually. So if you zoom in, that's, that's one of the things that I find very annoying about Kali Linux, but. Oops, yep, there we go. That's it. That's how you zoom in. What? Control plus minus. Zoom out. And view, zoom in. Control plus plus. Okay. So I am pressing control plus plus. But it seems to be minimizing things. Oh well, what can you do about it? It doesn't really matter. I will enlarge it later on as we progress through the tutorial. There are a few things that can be rather buggy here, especially with the keyboard keys that you are using because it's a virtual machine. If you were using Kali Linux as your main machine, as your host machine, you wouldn't have such problems, but as I have stated previously, it is not a recommended option. In any case, uh, that would be it for this tutorial. Th these are pretty much all the preparations that you needed to make. And next up, we're going to get into the Linux command line interface. I need to acquaint you with it, even though we have done some of the commands, they are a very small portion of what we need to learn, and I do need to explain them to you because we're going to be using Linux command line a lot. Basically, whatever we do, we're going to need it. And with that, I bid you farewell and sincerely hope to see you in the next tutorial.